Chair Gelser, Vice Chair Olson, members of the committee. My name is Karen Power. I represent House District 41, Oak Grove, Milwaukee, uh, Southeast Portland. We've heard the statistic before, but it's worth repeating. Four in 10 in Oregon are renters. That's nearly 1.5 million Oregonians across our state, in your districts and in mine, who are vulnerable to unpredictable displacement because our current law allows for nearly unfettered and unilateral tenant removal at any time with no reason. At the same time, we have incredibly low vacancy rates and escalating rents. More and more people are moving to our state and supply is not kept up with demand. This creates intense pressures that make it easier for bad actors to prey on tenants, refusing to make repairs, threatening eviction, discriminating, and no cause eviction is a tool that is too easily used with, misused with impunity, undermining our state's habitability and fair housing protections. Earlier this year, we celebrated the 49th anniversary of the Fair Housing Act. Despite this landmark law prohibiting discrimination on the basis of race, color, sex, national origin, or religion, we see far too many cases of eviction due to tenants' identities. Oregonians particularly vulnerable to displacement are people of color, those who work for low wages, seniors, and those with disabilities on fixed incomes. Escalating rents have the same impact as eviction, and economic eviction. This is not just a Portland problem. In fact, a recent lending tree study showed that the city in the nation with the greatest rent increases in the last five years was Bend, Oregon. Number two on the list in the nation, Pineville. The study measured changes in cities based on rent prices, home values, foreclosures, influx of new businesses, and the diversity of population changes. Four Oregon cities were in the top 10, Bend, Salem, Eugene, and Portland. Our communities are changing fast and we need to allow local jurisdictions the flexibility to address changing markets and allow people who have built these communities to continue to live in them rather than be priced out. No cause eviction or economic eviction, these can force families into homelessness. This crisis is impacting our schools, businesses, employees, and for some of us, our families and our friends. Some have suggested that the solution to this problem is supply. And yes, supply will help. The recent rate of underbuilding is indeed surprising given our re recent economic recovery and we will continue to work hard to support a variety of policy approaches that supports further supply in the legislature. However, we must act now to ensure stability for families, children, seniors, and everyone in our communities and to give local governments the tools they need to prevent displacement in their communities. This bill is just and is measured and I urge your support. Thank you.